Big shout out to JF, JK, 2010, and Jakati Stephens. What's going on guys, Road King Sino here bringing you another episode of the Dirty Left Shoe Chronicles. You dig? Big shout out to JF, JK, 2010, and Jakati Steffens. Um, I appreciate you guys uh, requesting the strap down video. I did say if someone did request the video, I would go ahead and do it. Don't bite my head off. It's more than one right way to strap down a T-Rex. There's plenty of wrong ways, but it's more than one right way. This is just what works for me. Others, they might do it a little different. Everybody's trailer set up a little different. So without further ado, let's hop right into it, okay? First thing I like to do, everything I'm gonna use as far as the straps go, I like to have laid out, okay? So let me show you what I got going on. I like to use these crank type straps. Some people like to use pull straps. Me, I like the crank type straps because I feel like you could put a little bit more tension on whatever you're strapping down. And I feel like you have a better chance uh, a non-failure versus a pull strap. I have had some issues with pull straps in the past. So I'm going with crank straps. These happen to be Rhino USA straps. I've had these for a while now. I use these to transport my um, motorcycles and things like that. I've never had any issues with them yet. You should have your own straps if you're already transporting your T-Rex. Uh, if you don't have straps, I would just recommend just finding you a nice heavy duty crank strap and uh, making sure you get at least four of them. That's just my opinion. You can strap them down with less than four if you choose. Me, I like to have four points of contact on the majority of things that I'm doing unless I'm kind of out and I only have a couple straps and I just gotta make it a short distance. So I got four crank straps here and I got these hook and loops. These hook and loops make it a little easier a lot of times because you don't have to hook right around your frame in different parts of uh, your T-Rex, bike, where have you that you want to protect. So the hook and loops make it easy to where you can just hook it around whatever part, you know, solid part hopefully that you're going to use. And it's multiple ways you can do it. And you'll see once I strap it down, but you can go this way. You can slide it all the way through. It's just a couple variations that you can go when you're using the, uh, the hook and loop. So I'll definitely be using the hook and loops in the back. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use them in the front yet. It just depends on where I'm gonna be mounting it at. After I had these straps laid out, what I like to do is lay them out in the trailer at the strapping points, at the mountain points to where I'm gonna be strapping the T-Rex down at. For the purpose of this video, I went ahead and removed the bed and everything just so you can get a clear picture of what I'm doing here. And I also move my T-Rex back. Um, because more light can come in here. It's a little dark inside the trailer, but every trailer, you know, depending on how you got it built and whatnot, every trailer should be equipped with D-rings in various places. It just depends on where it's at in your trailer. I happen to have a few in here. Normally I would take and I would push this T-Rex and have it kind of centered to where the wheel wheels are at, just to kind of give an even distribution of weight. But again, for the purposes of this video, I'm trying to bring as much light in here as possible so you guys can see everything. So I kind of got it back a little bit. But nevertheless, I got my D-rings right here in the rear. I have my D-rings located up front as well with the straps in place. For this particular method, I'm not going to use um, the hook and loop straps on here. Just because of the position that I'm going to be strapping this down uh, at. And I have used the hook and loops in the front before. I've also used just a regular hook um, on, you know, the suspension. So, tell you what, you can never have too many of these, okay? Too many rags or too much blue painter's tape. So, when in doubt, if you feel like you're going to scratch something up or anything like that, just go ahead, man, and put a little bit on it. It's not going to hurt it, okay? I assure you. I'm just going to get the front set up, and then we'll go to the back. I'll get that set up, strapped down, and then we'll strap down the front. Okay, I don't know if that confused you guys, but you get what I'm saying. You'll see it. So what I like to do is these crank straps, I like to have the crank strap in the position to where I'm pulling down towards the D-ring. Um, if you were using pull straps, you'll be pulling up on it. But for crank straps, I'm cranking it down towards the D-ring. 
I just feel like it, it, it feels like it gives me a better anchor. Uh, whether it does or doesn't, I don't have any, you know, scientific proof to show it or whatever. It's just how I do it. Some people, they go the opposite way, but I just recommend kind of going this way. It's a little easier for me. Um, and I do that with all my straps. First thing I'm going to go ahead and do, put my cloth over my arm. I'm using the top arm for this. And these particular straps that I'm using have these clips on them. When you're using like on cloths and rags to protect things, it's hard for this to get around it. No big deal because the key is you're trying to have tension on this strap. So as long as the tension is there, the hook's not going to come loose. Try and keep your straps as straight as possible, guys. That'll help a lot too. Okay, we're going to go up and behind it. No particular reason. It's just to keep this strap straight. Okay? And it looks like I'll be able to squeeze a little bit of the cloth in there. You can do that any way you want to do it. You know the key is to get it there in a safe manner. Then we're going to go ahead and just put a little tension on it. Nothing big, okay? Just a little tension on it. I'll set the other one up the same way. And then we'll go ahead and we'll get the back set up. Then we'll snug everything down. Nothing big, just a little tension right there all right so look now let's go to the back normally you have the the brackets right here that the uh that the slip on pipes stock exhaust mufflers or the slip on mufflers uh hang off of i removed mine i got a full exhaust on it now so i don't have that um i've mounted to that before to put a little pressure uh, on the suspension which is fine for this particular video i'm going to be strapping it to the lower part, this like crossbar of the frame, I've used this method as well and I haven't had any issues with it. So what I'm going to do is just run it through here, loop it through, and that's it guys. That's all you want. You see how dirty it is? <laughs> that's because I ride. <laughs> Crank closest to the D-ring that's located on the floor, which is a stationary mountain point. Then, the only thing I'm going to do is take these two, run this through here, put a little tension on it, that's it right now, let me set the other side up, pull this through guys, you're just going to see me crank down a little bit. Alright, so now I can start putting a little more tension on it, pulling it back just a little bit, you see I got a good amount of tension there. All right, so that's probably good. I'll come back to it and check it in a minute. Put a slip knot in it for now. All right, let me snug this down. All right. Think we good? Bam. All right. We just pull on this a little bit, pull on this a little bit, we're pretty snug. Now let's go snug down the front. Now, the back is pulling on it, and this would be the same method if you were uh, strapping down the front first. The front would be pulling on it. So the back is pulling backwards, the front theoretically is pulling forward. Now look how much tension that already has on it. I don't need a whole lot more on this strap, you know what I mean? Just enough tension on there so it's tight here, it's tight in the back. Uh, and it's the same way on both sides. So let's go ahead and just snug it up a little bit. That's about it. Lock it in place. A lot of these crank straps you lock in place after you um, have it where you want it. So this piece should be all the way down and locked right here in this notch. I don't know if you can see that, but in this notch, okay? Same thing on this side, guys. We just got to snug it up just a little bit. Just a little bit, guys. That's it. Throw your little knot in it. Or whatever you do with the rest. And you're good. Go back. Check your straps. Check every strap. Make sure you got plenty of tension on it. Some people um, chalk their wheels, too. Sometimes I just put a chalk in the back. Sometimes I let it ride, it just depends. In this case, obviously, I'm not going to put a chalk in there. I'm just kind of showing you guys this um, for the purpose of the video. So let me go check the back straps. Make sure they got some tension on it, and we're done. Plenty of tension. 
plenty of attention. And do not hammer me because how dirty my T-Rex is. I was just riding the other day, tuning this thing and doing a whole lot of other little stuff. So you know what I mean? For you cats that all you do is keep your T-Rex spotless and squeaky clean. Hey look, I could just tell you mine is clean sometimes, but I ride mine. You did. Again guys, there's a few ways that you can strap down your T-Rex. This happens to be how I strap down mine. Um, feel free to leave in the comment section below and let me know what you think. Let me know how you might strap yours down. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't done so already, make sure you comment, like, subscribe, most of all share. Big shout out to my T-Rex family out there. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.